Where are we sitting? Is that okay? That's good. All right. Oh, do you want to be near here? Here. Gary brought his flip chart. I did. It's a special one. So, Dr. Slido, ask our wonderful audience one word to describe Gary Keller, and then uh, time for you and I to chat. By the way, be sure my wife is getting in on that. Yeah. Well, you got plenty of fans here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you very much for doing this. You're more than welcome. The, the enthusiasm by our audience. Some love you, some aren't so sure, and someone don't, a few don't know you. But uh, I, feel, I feel the same way. Yeah, exactly. Let's start with that, actually, and then you're going to kind of share your vision like Kalia did. Yeah. And I think it's going to be really interesting to the crowd. But who is Gary Keller? Just, just give us a little... Oh, you wow. Know, Okay. Uh, I'm a By the way, you're a leader, innovative, and a visionary, according to our audience. <laughs> wow. How do you? I don't. I don't want to waste time talking about that. What do you? What do you want to know about me? Well, what's one thing? Is it true you're going to put realtor on your gravestone? Yes. Wow. That's yeah. pretty powerful. That's well. A lot. Someone asked me some once. I mean, professionally, right? What I wanted to to my legacy, and I said I want to die being a realtor. I want it to say on my headstone I was a realtor. I have a degree in real estate, right? Got out of college in the late 70s, was one of the first people to have a degree in it, was a broker at 21, and um, I've never gotten out, right? So you live in Belize, you love real estate, right? Yeah, sold six yeah. houses my first month in a city I'd only been in once. By the time right. I was 26, I was a vice president of a large real estate company in my market. No, yeah. I love this business. Yeah. It's a great business. And what, let's, let's now jump into, lay out, I, I think my question to you on this one is, Lay out where you think it's going, because we've got to like competing theories on the future that we're going to really bear down on the next couple of days, and I think yours is important. And we got you a couple magic markers, we got an eraser, awesome, and we got a film crew that's going to zoom in on it so that they can do this see so what you can do. see it. And we're going to put a clock on you, gang yeah, in the yeah, back yeah, yeah, yeah. of ten minutes. Um, Fifteen. Ten. <laughs> ten. <laughs> okay. But you're going to talk for 45. It's just 10 on this yeah, yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you asked, so the question you asked me was, where's the industry going? Yeah, exactly. And so I thought about that, and I kind of want to diagram it, and then we can sure. talk through that. Let's do it. So if you think about any business out there, right, there's, there's, there's three paths it can go. It can go this way, it can go this way, and it can go that way, right? So there's three phases to building a business in any industry. Um, there's this phase, there's this phase, and then there's one of those three. And is right? that an individual business or the industry? Yes, this is, this, is, this is a business inside of an industry. Okay, gotcha. So what happens is you have this period of what I would say uh, trial and error. Yeah. So businesses start, business go out of business, go into business. They try all kind of things, and at some point, um, the, the people that have made it get to this point. And then at that moment in history, and it shows up for every business, uh, this is where the innovation, the real innovation occurs. Where is, where is uh, Compass and EXP? Are they in that first big circle? <sighs> well, I don't mean to throw no, you No, you didn't at all. By the way, no one's in the circle yet. No one's in the circle. So I just had to think about that for a I'm second. I'm not in the circle? Damn. Well, you can be in the circle. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to put Brad right there. You're in the yeah. circle. Hey! Uh, no, by the way, no, I, I believe that every firm, whether they've been in business for a year, five years, 10 years, 100 years, I think all of us are right there. Gotcha. So when I talk about, uh, and I've made the statement that uh, in February, I got on stage and said that uh, in, the, in the next year, you won't recognize the real estate industry. I wasn't kidding. And what's interesting is the amount of change that we're all feeling yep. is real and palpable. Yeah. And it's happening. That, that, that's going to accelerate right there. So let me, let me explain what I mean by so this. You're saying this stuff, we're just in the first inning, it's coming. Nothing's happened yet. Yeah, gotcha, okay, go ahead. Um, nothing's happened. Yeah. The, the, I'm serious about that, nothing's happened, but it's fixing to happen. Yeah. Okay? It's fixing to happen. So let's, think, let's ask what, what causes that, okay? So what causes that is, um, uh, we started out with, in, in the world, with hardware, right? Hardware was invented. And at some point, um, you had software to run the hardware, right? One of the most interesting decisions in the world is that IBM, who created the hardware, decided not to own the software. And they gave, they gave one of the greatest deals of all time to Bill Gates and Paul Allen to own the software, right? Yeah. So 
then all of a sudden, at some point, you're using your hardware, your phone, and you're using software, and you get this um, um, offer to buy a data plan because you were out of space. Right. So someone came up with the idea of how about if, and they call it the cloud, how about if we just string computers together and we put all your data there so you can uh, access it from any, any uh, uh, technology uh, hardware that you want to use, right? Yep. Okay. Well, here's the interesting thing about that. That's a commodity. For about $1,000 or less, I can buy a piece of hardware, I can buy a piece of software or multiple softwares, and I can buy a data service, and I'm in business, right? Yes. Okay. That's a commodity. What's changing the world today, and it's called the fourth industrial revolution, and that is... Um, Anyone who put teacher or professor up in their one-word description? <laughs> Um, is data powered by artificial intelligence. That's it. Yeah. So everything that we have, anything that's been invented by any of us uh, prior, prior to what's coming has all been, the industry's all been about this, the latest gadget, the latest idea, the latest thing. Cool, that's great. That's what that is, by the way. But this right here, big data, that is, that is being powered by artificial intelligence, that and by the way, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in real estate. This applies to all industries. By the way, the medical profession, the legal profession, the architecture profession, any profession you want to name is at this moment. And the reason is because, you know, you have two worlds that we live in. The first one is the physical world, and the second one is the digital world. And what happens is everybody who's physically based, all their businesses, they wake up and the, and the fatal question they say is, what's the least I have to do in the digital world to protect what I currently have physically? The challenge is, is that the people who are in the digital space wake up every morning and they say, what's the least I have to do physically to kick your physical butt? Yeah. Right? Okay. So this is the battle. The battle is over big data, okay, powered by artificial intelligence. So let's look at the real estate industry. Now you should sign that, Gary, because some people will pay me. To yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. I'm a capitalist. Okay, so let's look at the real estate industry real quick and why we feel this change going on, Brad. Um, industry starts out as real estate agent. At some point, we have uh, the tech-enabled uh, real estate agent, okay? MLS being a good example of that. Technology enabling the real estate agent. Does that make sense? Where does the MLS come in? I'm confused. It's the, it's the technology that enables agents to do their jobs. The MLS. Better. MLS is an example of where technology showed up yep, to enable gotcha. the agent. Okay? And then the next thing is all of a sudden we have this thing, and it's called the agent-enabled tech. Got it? And what's and by, that? Well, okay. And then, by the way, the fourth would be the prediction that someday you just have tech. Well, the interesting thing is that will never happen and that ship has sailed. Right. So you can literally take our industry and put it in a box like this and say, you're gonna be one of two people. You're either going to be an agent who is enabled by tech or you're going to be the agent that is enabling the tech. Right. Now, here's this interesting, so now let's talk about- let's get, Let me just bring it down a little bit. Tell me exactly what that means. I'm What's the difference? No, I, well, the agent is the fiduciary here Right. And, the age, and the tech is the fiduciary there. Hmm. So this is a battle over who's going to be the fiduciary. So that might be... Who's the, who's the smart, rock star in the experience? So it might be smart contracts, some of the, okay. all the tech taking care of that stuff that we'll used get to, to be the fiduciary. We'll get there in just okay. a second. That's right. So, so let's now list these. So we're running we, out of time. That's what I'm worried about. No, you're not. Yeah, you're not. No. <laughs> no, we're not. I love this guy. If you saw our email banners, you would just think. No, great. we're not, because when you invited me, you said I could do what I wanted. No, you're doing a good job. Okay, good. <laughs> Touche. I love that. You did. I have the email. Okay, you're losing. We'll, we'll post it. <laughs> yeah, I love you. You're awesome. All right. So, by the way, Realtor.com started that whole mess, okay? And then we have Zillow, you have Trulia. Uh, we can throw Redfin into that. Uh, we can throw Purple Bricks into that. We can throw Open Door into that. We can throw OfferPad into that. Pretty much all the people that Inman News worships. <laughs> I 
Oh, no, no, I love Brad. And I, I mean, he knows I love him. But we're. It's because they're really smart people, Gary. Well, <laughs> okay. And, they, and they're not? Okay. Whatever. But uh, you're, you're, losing, so here, no, you're no. losing me on this. Okay, hang on a Agent second. Agent-enabled tech, you're saying all of these players on the right have agents. Well, they're agent-enabling tech. But they're so all dri tech-driven companies, correct? I will tell you that every one of these companies have agents because they have to, not because they want to. Gotcha. These are not agent-centric businesses. If they could do it without, if Glenn Kelman could run Redfin without agents, he'd do it in a heartbeat. And if he tells you otherwise, he's lying. Okay. Well, he'll, well be here in a, he'll be here in an hour to defend. Well, I'll be happy to stay. But I'm just telling you that, that he's in that category. Okay? okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. And he loves that category. He likes, but that's who he is. Okay? You with me? So what's, what, the reason why you and I get off to rocky starts at times yeah, that's all right. is because, <laughs> well, because I'm over here. I'm, You're over there. I'm, I'm over here. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I work for the real estate agent. I have my whole life. I'll go to my grave on my gravestone saying that. Hurrah! Yep, yep. So, well, I'm not going to get there too soon. So let's, yeah. right. So if you look over here, when, when Inman, and I love what you do, by the way. I, I wouldn't have come here if, if I didn't appreciate you. I really wouldn't have. I just said, kiss my ass, I'm not coming. Yeah. And I didn't say that. Yeah, no, you didn't. No, I didn't. But, it but, took a while to persuade you. Though. Well, it did because people yeah. that work with me are more important than people that don't. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, get, I get paid to help certain people. And well, other we're people. grateful you're here, and I well, want here, you to okay, sit hang down on. with me so I can chat okay, you Okay, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. So here's where, here's where the, 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 the challenge comes in, and that is when, and I'm not picking on you, by the way, but, but, when, but because I read pretty much everything that's written, through your new service. So I, I, I want to respect that. The reason why you and I get crosswise at times is because um, you, you, you represent these guys as, as the disruptors. Over here, the articles are already three ways to have a better open house. Four ways, these are gonna kick your ass and change the world. Five ways to list FISBOs. Right, this, this, go back and check and you'll see it. But this is all, this absolutely treats these individuals as if they're not disruptors, as if they, they, they work for this group. Now here's, a, here's another interesting fact about this group. Let's put, the, let's put every one of these groups, uh, I can put the aggregators over here and they want to reduce the agent's income by at least 30% or more, right? So if you they want to do what? Reduce their income. So the real estate agent, if they do business with these guys, is going to op they're going to operate at about a two percent approximate uh, commission. But if they if, if deliver, they were charging hold three, on, if they deliver volume of transactions, well, they be make careful up for the difference. You need to be careful with that because you're talking to the guy who wrote the book on it. Yeah, but you got you got a no, hundred thousand no, no. agents. No, 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 no. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a number here, ten percent. If you're spending more than ten of, of your gross income for leads. Yeah. Now, I wrote a book, and I, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there how isn't many, anyone that many, understands this. How many this. in the audience think Gary book applies as much today as it did when he wrote it? Say yes. And how many, well, how many think it doesn't apply quite as much as he did when he wrote it? Let's just see what people think. Well, here's the interesting thing about that. So, I, so we said That's down, for Dr. Slido. Did so you we, get that, Dr. So we, Slido? So we, Okay, so we sat down a year ago to write the MREA sec updated version, right? Right. Here's what we found out. Everything that's in that book is 100% accurate today, except for the actual numbers. Well, we want to ask the audience if they agree with you. Well, they Dr. Slido, are you on this? How many think Gary's book is as relevant today as it was when he wrote it, and how many think it is not? One, one caveat, you have to put your income down by your answer. Okay, well, let's... Because... <laughs> because... Because I will tell you that anybody, that anybody who would say that it's yeah. not relevant today are your least earning people. My in the audience room. has a higher income than your community, Gary, because they paid a lot to come here. And, but anyway. Okay. Okay. So here's my point to you. My point is, is that I am absolutely the leading expert. We're going to be friends when this is all over. Oh, of course. I like your shoes. Hey, yeah. Dr. Slido, how are we doing? Okay. Dr. Slido. Okay, time out. Now, you're taking my time by asking I know. some guys to well, stop that. Well, it's a that. conversation, Gary. Okay. So here's the thing. Th that's the cost for a lead. 
If you're spending more than that, you better have good justification. You with me? Yep. Now, that's just what the research says. And I spend all my time, this is what I do, by the way. Now, you get into this group, these guys want that commission to be 1% to 2% as well, correct? Redfin? Redfin, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Purple Bricks wants it to be maybe 1% to 1.5% max. Open Door will pay you 1%. Offer Pad will pay you 1%. This is why you feel, this is why you feel the way you feel about change is because all of that group wants tech to be the rock star and wants the agent to be the yeah, but don't, functionary. Let me, let me just ask you one question, Gary. And, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be like that. You, you spread this thing, which I think the industry has been good at, which is fear, which is they wake up every morning maliciously trying to go after the real estate industry. Well, and I don't, you, you meet with, it's a you've cut deals with Zillow, you've cut deals with Realtor.com. I know for a fact you met with the disruptors. You'll cut a deal with anyone on their behalf. So if they were on that malicious, behalf? why would behalf? you let them into your office, right? I mean, you have a deal with Zillow, correct? Do I? I presume you do. I hear do, you do. I don't think I do. You have no deal with Zillow. What's my deal? To protect the listings from having... Oh, no, they bought that agreement with Dotloop. I didn't sign a deal with Zillow. So you have no deal with Zillow? No. Why would you don't I? do business with any of these people. Why would I do business? What do I do with Zillow? Okay. I don't have listings. I've, I've heard through the grapevine. Obviously, we don't publish it. because No, I have, a, I, have a, I have an agreement with Dotloop okay. that they can't use our data. Right. Now, Zillow's come back to us, and they're now asking that, it, that we give them their data. I they just recently asked is, for that. And and what was your, my answer? Your agents are sitting across the table from Redfin. They're, sitting, they're, they're spending money on Zillow. These are smart people yeah. that are investing in things. They're not yeah. that stupid, are they? Gary, you've got to sit down. I'm going to get, come on, just sit down. Yeah, I'm going to do one more thing. Okay, really quick. This is talk, Barry Dillard did this to me, Barbara Corkin. No, 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 they, no, no. They are people that can take the stage away from Brad Inman. But no, it's fine. I'm not trying to do that. I'm, I'm very relaxed to... and comfortable. So, so, so the last thing I'll say then is this, and that is, so that's the challenge. Yeah. So the real estate agent gets to vote with their feet. So by the way, this group, if this group doesn't own its tech, it's going to succumb to that group. Gotcha. That's my point. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, if you put someone between you and the customer, and you let technology get between you and the customer, here's an interesting number for you, $1 billion. That's the amount of money that we surveyed and we estimate that our own real estate agents spend on technology outside of Keller Williams. A billion dollars, Brad. But isn't I don't get paid a fraction of that. But historically, the industry's paid 12 to $15 billion for advertising, whether they gave it to the Chicago Tribune, or they gave it to billboards, or they gave it to to bus signs or whether they gave it to Zillow, that money, so a billion, I mean, they're, they're spending, they've always mm -hmm. spent billions marketing, haven't they? This Didn't you always spend money in marketing? This is not marketing dollars. Yeah. These are operational dollars. I didn't so, say So I'm sorry, give, give the, do it again, so I missed On it. software. Oh, and software. They're spending $1 billion. And the software. reason why the software vendors don't like me today is, right. I'm literally taking that spend to zero. Yeah. My goal is to reclaim a billion dollars. But aren't you going to sell technology to your agent? Isn't that part of your business model? No, it's 300 bucks a year. What? But that's $300 a year times 150 Well, compared 000. to Sync that would charge the same amount to an agent, yeah. anywhere from 18 to 100. I've got agents in the audience that spend $300,000 a year on technology alone. Yeah. By the way, in about three months, they'll be spending that much. 300 Come bucks. Come sit down with me. So last thing. Gary. So here's the issue. So when we talk about, that's the last thing. You're getting an education, that's good for you. <laughs> well, here's the thing is, is when, when I stood up and said that we were becoming a technology company, man, I took a beating from, from everybody. I thought I was a dumbass. Yeah. Well, you said it and no one knew exactly what you were building. Well, I didn't want them to know. Yeah. But it was quite a declaration. I'm spending a billion dollars in technology you would automatically... Okay, so if I let someone build my technology for me, what do I own? Say it again. If I let someone... I mean, let me ask you a question. Does Amazon own their software or do they buy it from Fidelity? Uh, they own it. I... Does Amazon own their software or do they buy it from... Pick a company. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. You know the answer. Well, I assume they Amazon do. owns their software. Facebook owns their software. Yes? Yeah. Netflix owns their software, right? Yeah. Okay. So why would we tell the real estate agent, don't own your software? 
or don't let your company you're in partnership with, why would we tell them not to own it? That's a dumbass statement, man. That is, that is, that you're literally heading them to the slaughter, not you, because you don't say that, but I'm saying anyone who says that is literally leading the real estate agent by the nose. Now would you sit down with me? I nope. ask you as a gentleman. I know you did, but I haven't finished. Come on, Gary, sit down with me. No, 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 we got one more thing. So, here, here's what changes the world. So, there's a difference between software and platforms. Our industry doesn't really understand this, okay? And that is, if you want to build an innovation engine, Brad, in order to, uh, to build a platform that you can innovate on top of the technology, the first thing is you have to build a cloud service. Now, this isn't a cloud service like I was talking about. This is an industry-specific cloud service. How long does it take to build an industry-specific cloud service? About two to three years. That's what, it t that's what Google tells me. That's about how long it took us to do it. About two to three years, okay? Second thing, and by the way, you have to have, in order to make it significant, you have to have the data. So tomorrow morning, if EXP announced that they were going to build a cloud service, you'd say, well, that's good, but where's the data? You don't have any data. Okay, but if they had the data and they were going to build a cloud service, it would take them three years. If Compass today said, we don't have a cloud service, but we're going to do it, and they don't have one, by the way, but if they said they were going to do it, it's going to take them two to three years. You with me? Okay, here's the problem with that. The problem with that two to three year time frame is it's happening right now. If you don't already have it, you're in second place. Okay? Now, here's the other thing, and that is you have to have artificial intelligence. Why? So here's a good example. So let's just think about this for a second. Let's say that you have an agent software and you have a real estate company software. So in the real estate company software, we have all the data on production of everybody in the business, right? So then we have the agent. So tomorrow morning, the agent goes out and they take a, they take a listing. But because all the data on t days on market, price to sell ratios, all of that's, all that's down here, the second the agent takes the listing, artificial intelligence sends a ping to them and says, for a home in that price range in this neighborhood, you should, you should use smart plan number 12 with these attributes. Would you like us to execute it? If the agent clicks yes, the whole plan is initiated in an instant over a 12-week period. Okay. Great. Let's throw out some questions to the audience. Can we use Dr. Um, Slido? That was his way of getting control. No, Good no. Job. You, yeah, it was. was. Great. No, I learned a lot, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Slido, uh, at whatever we need to do for you all to submit questions, and then we'll get some of those questions up. I think they'll pop up right here, and we can answer whatever. So here's the challenge. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to educate you. Yeah, so no, I need to is, be educated. Well, the, the point is, is that everything that we're dealing with today around software is bolt-on technology. Yeah. I read the latest article you just wrote, uh, you, you, you published yesterday, and it said, here's the three rules for technology. Yeah. What did we say? <laughs> Well, number one, you said it needs to talk to each other. Yeah. Right? You have Is that your... a good thing? Well, how are you going to, if you don't have that, it's not going to talk right. to each other. So when I read that article, I went, jeepers, you should have taken a poll by Dr. Slidell or whatever and asked him how much, <laughs> how, whatever, the, how much of their technology is going to actually yeah, talk yeah. to each other. Brand, it doesn't talk. We have agents out a, there. I talked to a consultant yesterday, and his whole business is to work with broker owners on integration. Oh, no, and no, just, no, just we, call let, me. Let, let integration, me if the, you do that, exactly. it's integrated. I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Gary. Slow down. And the fact that we'd even need an industry to help integration shows that we have a problem. So what are we asking? Uh, any yeah. questions from the audience? Oh, here we go. What does, will you own, here's a KW agent, will you own my data as a KW agent? In other words, will you, ha will you own his data? Or will yeah. You? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Here's we'll own them with them. With them? Sure. So there, this whole confusion about data ownership, you'll own it with them? Well, someone's got to own it. Yeah. In other words, whoever owns that cloud service and that artificial intelligence is going to own that data. Now, here's a question I'd have you for that person. Yeah. Who would you, someone's going to own it. Would you rather the, the, uh, a real estate company that has a history of being the most agent-centric on the planet, right? Here's another number for you, a billion dollars in profit sharing paid out. Now, I invite anyone in this room who's paid out a billion dollars to their people in a profit share program. Are you still doing that, by the way? Why would I? I mean, that's core to your program, right? Yeah. Profit sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, is that still driving your growth the same as it has? 
I wouldn't think so. Now, what is driving it now? Community? Technology. Technology. They're coming to you for technology. Yeah, so here's another number for you, $6 billion. And that's the amount of productive uh, volume that joined Keller Williams in the first uh, 90 days of, two, of 2018. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like this has been going for 22 years? We've been talking about robots for five years here, 10 years. We've been talking about all the things you have up on that board. Why is it? Were you a little late to the game, too? Uh, I'm not, no, there's a difference between late and too late. Timely, you were timely. Mm, well, actually, I think we showed, no, I, I actually think we're the only one on time. Yeah. And I think you're going to see that in the next couple of months. Now, you told me backstage you're launching something later this year. Tell the crowd what that is. Well, we don't launch things. Okay. So, again, I'm going to get back, I'm going to get, I'm going to get back to, to this point right here. The challenge that you have is if you haven't already built an innovation platform, yeah. you're two to three years late. And the battle is going to be over the consumer. Yeah. So, you, so one last thing. Just think about this. So if we think about the consumer, and we think about, by the way, if you want to be, if you want to be Netflix, number one, you have to own your software. Number two, you have to build an end-to-end -end consumer experience, right? That's personalized as you use it, right? If you go to your Netflix account, mine does not look like yours. If I go to my Amazon page, it doesn't, mine doesn't look like yours, right? Okay, so that's interesting to point that out because if you think about the consumer experience as voyeurism to search, to consideration, to close, to ownership, and we put those in buckets, you realize that uh, voyeurism in search is the only thing that actually is out there today for the consumer. I would agree with that. Yeah, we don't have online transaction yet, right. though we will by the end of the year. And oh, by the way, we don't have ownership, which we'll have that. So imagine an app just as an example, just imagine an app for the consumer that in real time, the second they use it, it begins using artificial intelligence to, to just like Netflix or anything else to personalize the experience in real time. Yeah. Imagine that it says, um, uh, after you, at, the, at a closing table, you say, um, uh, Brad, now that, we've, now that you've bought, bought a home, um, uh, would you like to refinance if you could save money? Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna click yes, and you don't have to do anything. Uh, by the way, if rates change and you can save money, you're going to get an alert and it's going to say, would you like to refinance? Now, because we own a mortgage company and we don't charge origination fees or closing costs, the mortgage industry hates me. Too bad. Okay. We don't charge any of that. We don't charge, any, we don't charge you any of that. It's free. Just yeah. click it and we'll refinance your home. At that's what's coming. At what point? And you, by the way, that's the battle. You go, go. The battle is not over search. Yeah. That's going to be a commodity. Here we got a question. At what point do you care about the consumer experience versus the agent experience? Or do well, you leave that to the agent? Well, no, I, I care about the agent. I care about the agent's consumer experience. And do you feel like your technology is enabling the agent to create a better consumer experience? Or do you actually? Yeah, that's the whole point. Are you ever going to go direct to the consumer? Well, here's the thing about it. No, why would I do that? Okay. No, I don't, I don't have buyers or sellers. No. Think, if you think about it this way, just think about it this way. The consumer is the agents. But if the whole world is moving towards the phone being the remote control of their life, right? Then the agent's gonna have to have that tool. If the agent doesn't have that tool to offer the end-to-end -end consumer experience, how, how, how are they gonna serve So you're consumer? obsessed by the agent getting the tools to serve the consumer. That's, the, that's really your vision. Well, let me ask you a question. How long after you wake up in the morning do you go to your phone? Um, really quick, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I wish right. I did. No, we all do. Yeah. No, we all do. So it's the remote control. Kind of sick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, but it, um, where we are. Does EXP scare you? Does anyone scare you, Gary? No. Yeah? No, because, no, they don't. At that was the wrong way to phrase the question. No, think, of, no, think about this. The, when, when I started Keller Williams, I built an innovation engine. So here's a good example. You bring up EXP, great example. By the, by the way, Glenn speaks so highly of you. He thinks you're a genius. Love it, great, good for him. I appreciate it. <laughs> and that, and the, I don't care, right? Yeah. Um, so, think about, so think about it this way. When, when we created the Profit Share Program, this is what everyone missed. We created a, a, a leadership council. We assigned the decision-making of the firm to that council. So we profit share today. If our agents want to change that to something else, they can. Right. They can vote and change it. Here's an interesting tidbit of, uh, of information. So when they come together on a regular when basis. When we first started sharing money, we didn't profit share. 
we actually shared the money. Off the top, you sell a house, we wrote a check. That has problems. That, that, has, it, that formula. Three years into doing that, it started showing real problems. And so we ultimately voted and changed it to profit sharing. So you're saying that's what EXP does now, and that's gonna, they're going to run into problems. What I'm saying is, they're, same with Exit, same with all the other copycats. Yeah. That the, at the end of the day, they're, they're gonna, they think they've reinvented something that's broken. But here's the interesting thing. Remember, that's flattery when people copy you. I, listen, I have no problem with that. And when people disagree with me, it just means that I'm ahead. Yeah. I don't worry about that. Yeah. I, I honestly don't worry about that. What about that agent county XP? That's got a, you guys have been sitting there wringing your hands a little bit. Why are we talking about them? Well, they're just part of the scene, and we got a question from the audience. Not really. Well, not really. I mean, at the, at the, at the end of the... No, yeah. no. It, no, we're captains of our own... I don't want to obsess on it. Let's move on. Okay. Let me ask you this. Leadership, you are generally... You are known as a leader in the industry. Okay. How has... Think about in your 30 years, has the role of the leader changed? Like, is, how's leadership changed from, say, 30 years exactly? Well, I think the same. industry's changed, and yeah. that is, is that today... Um, you can, you can say the before technology and the after technology era. Prior to technology becoming an absolute imperative for our industry, training, coaching, consulting, yeah. right? That was, the, that was the value proposition that we provided real estate agents. And that's right? how you make your money, right? Well, we became the number one training company in the world. Right. We built the number one coaching company inside the real estate industry, dude. We, <laughs> right. We, Okay, we did that. Here's the problem is, is that that used to be 100% of the conversation. And we woke up about three years ago and went, we're not going to stop doing that. That's no longer what will protect our people. Technology and owning that technology and putting technology that works in their hands is the only thing that, that we're focused on. It doesn't, it, but that doesn't mean the agents don't still need it, but you'll be giving it to them in a different way. Like I presume your training is going more AI and using yeah, technology and not one-on-one, right. -on -one, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Go back, let me go back to Clea's theory. She said, she compared it to Wall Street and she said the digital transaction for part of the deals. By the way, one comment, and we won't talk about this again about EXP. No, that's all right. What, what I found fascinating. Remember, I didn't bring it back there. No, 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 they did. But that's okay. No, no I just want to point out one thing, and that is I went back and looked, and, and there's a group of leaders there that used to be with Keller Williams. I went back and looked, and we paid those leaders over a million dollars last year. So I was wondering publicly, since they think we're broken, if they would just renounce that money. There you go. By the way, in fairness, Glenn will be on the stage to explain his business model. Um, cool. Let's go back to Love Kalia, because I'm curious if, and I got this, a different vision, a different way of looking at it, but she says a digital transaction for part of the, the deals, meaning much like E-Trade, the middle will be Charles Schwab, people and agents, but an agent with a different role, and the third will be more relationship driven. She's kind of saying five years out, you can put Redfin, you can put purple bricks in the middle, you can put, uh, at the low end, we don't have it, maybe instant offer. Do you, does that sound bullshit? Is that going to happen? Sure it is. Here, the, the, it, <laughs> I want, I want, again, I want you to understand something. I kind of like when you're up there now. I've yeah, come, cool. It took you're me a while to, to get comfortable with it, as you yep. can all tell. <laughs> here's, my, here's the point I'm trying to make. That right there, yeah. the ability to innovate in real time, yeah. That's, that changes everything. Yeah. The, the ability to build a platform that talks to each other where everything is integrated, integrated yeah. is everything. The problem in our industry today is none of the companies that you would put on that side over there, and we can go from rheology. I mean, when Berkshire Hathaway calls us up and wants to rent our cloud service, do you dude, that's a problem. Do you that for that? Re how do you, you, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, rheology. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I called, you, cheap shot. I called you Bob once. Yeah, I know. You called me a lot of things in March. I was in Australia, so I didn't hear it, but... Uh, that was good. People were fact, texting me like crazy. I said, oh, don't worry. You know why I do that is because... It's okay, you do. The, well, it's because the, a lot of the articles you produce are one-sided. They don't tell the other story, right? Yeah. yeah, I got pissed because you put my name in an article in the header and no one asked me for my opinion. Well, that's because we get a lot of readers when we put your name there. Okay. I, there's always two sides to the story. Yeah. And if you're not going to give me equal time in the article, then I yeah. have no choice but to stand up and, and attack that. Right. You leave me no choice. If yeah. you'll call me every time you mention me and, and let me talk, yeah. then I'll be nicer. 
Well, we like, you know, people love to read about you, and we try to cover you as fairly as we can. Our journalists wake every morning trying to do that. But they do a great job. We make mistakes, yeah. L let me go back to leadership. Is, how is running a real estate company today different than it was, or is it exactly the same? It's all about technology. Yeah, because you've always been kind of facilitator, educator, which is the new management style, more collaborator. Is that true with your... Well, I've always been a collaborator. Yeah. Yeah. And with your best agents. I always love the fact Penn, Ben Kenny's and Sue Adler's, these people I admire, are part of your brain trust. And they seem to me to be real good people. They're great people, yeah. by the way. And I, I spend probably uh, 20 to 30 hours a week working with our top yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do for a living. That's why I know. So I'll make a confession. I was out of the industry for many years in other industries doing things. I came back, and the first thing I had heard was uh, Keller Williams is on fire. And I had the impressions that a lot of people had. Cult, Texas, Christian, all these tag words for, mm -hmm. for Gary Keller and mm -hmm. Keller Williams. And mm -hmm. I was inherently suspicious as a journalist. And I went down, and I wanted to understand the phenomenon. And the one thing that really struck me when you invited me to, I think, Family Reunion or mm -hmm. one of those, mm -hmm. was the community you created. Mm -hmm. And it's something we're very proud of. And we have a lot of overlap. There are people here that love you and hopefully some folks from your community that respect us. And I think we've all learned that building community and real estate is very powerful. So it is. We don't agree on everything, but I congratulate you on that. Well, and I also truly believe that you see the future better than a lot of us, and I really appreciate you being here. Well, thanks. And uh, really do. Yeah. What do you want to know? My last. What are you, di what are you dying to know? Well, what do you want to know? Tell these people one thing that's going to help them. We're saying there's a. You, you just said it. Change is upon us. What do they need to do? When I, when I wrote the book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, I said it very crystal clear, and that is your database is your business. Your personal relationship with your database is your frontline defense, offense and defense against anything else that can happen. That's it. Lead, generate, touch your people, right? Build, build relationship with your database. Is that it, and business hasn't changed. So the principles are the same, but the difference now is the database. But that was always the case, I guess, right? Yeah. Just keep, keep in touch with your customers. I mean, yeah. you said that over and over. Well, the, the truth of the matter is, is that the entire real estate experience is going to come online. That's all, that's all there is to it. Why did Zillow want our, our data that, that they can't use and they have to be audited twice a year to not use it? Is because they want to make their AVM better. Yeah. Now, is that good for us? Yes or no? Okay, then. Okay, then. The answer is no. It's not. It actually isn't good for us yeah. as an industry. Yeah. Great. Thank you for coming all the way up. You're welcome. You're the best. You're the best. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>